Introduction Deepfake is composed from deep learning and fake and means taking one person from an image or video and replacing with someone else likeness using technology such as deep artificial neural networks. 1. Large companies like Google invest very much in fighting the deepfake, this including release of large datasets to help training models to counter this threat. 2. The phenomenon invades rapidly the film industry and threatens to compromise news agencies. Large digital companies, including content providers and social platforms are in the front run of fighting deepfakes. GNs that generate deepfakes becomes better every day and of course, if you include in a new GN model all the information we collected until now how to combat various existent models, we create a model that cannot be beaten by the existing ones. In the data exploration section we perform a partial exploratory data analysis EDA, on the training and testing data. After we are checking the files types, we are focusing first on the metadata files, which we are exploring in details, after we are importing in data frames. Then, we move to explore video files, by looking first to a sample of fake videos, then to real videos. After that, we are also exploring few of the videos with the same origin. We are visualizing one frame extracted from the video, for both real and fake videos. Then we are also playing few videos. Then, we move to perform face, and other objects from the persons in the videos, extraction. More precisely, we are using OpenCV Har Cascade resources to identify frontal face, eyes, smile and profile face from still images in the videos. Important note, the data we analyze here is just a very small sample of data. The competition specifies that the trained data is provided as archive chunks. Training of models should be performed offline using the data provided by Kaggle as archives. Models should be loaded, max 1 gigabyte memory, in a kernel, where inference should be performed, submission sample file provided, and prediction should be prepared as an output file from the kernel. In the resources section I provide a short list of various resources for GN and Deepfake, with blog posts, Kaggle kernels, and GitHub repos. Preliminary Data Explorations Loading Packages This code imports several Python libraries that are commonly used in data analysis, visualization, and computer vision tasks. The first line of the code. Import numpy as np. Imports the number py library and assigns it the shorthand name, np, for convenience. NumberPy is a library for numerical computing in Python that provides support for multidimensional arrays and matrices. It is widely used for scientific computing, data analysis, and machine learning tasks. The second line, import pandas as pd, imports the pandas library and assigns it the shorthand name, pd, for convenience. Pandas is a library for data manipulation and analysis. It provides a way to handle and process data in a tabular form, which is similar to spreadsheets or SQL tables. The third line, import os imports the built-in OS module, which provides a way to interact with the operating system in Python. This can be used for tasks like reading and writing files, creating directories, and executing system commands. The fourth line, import matplotlib, imports the matplotlib library, which is a popular data visualization library in Python. Matplotlib provides a way to create static, animated, and interactive visualizations in Python. The fifth line, import seaborn as SNS, imports the seaborn library, which is another data visualization library in Python that builds on top of Matplotlib. Seaborn provides a high-level interface for creating informative and attractive statistical graphics. The sixth line, import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, imports the pyplot module from Matplotlib and assigns it the shorthand name, PLT, for convenience. The pyplot module provides a simple interface for creating and customizing plots, which is especially useful for interactive data analysis and exploration. The seventh line, from tqdm import tqdm underscore notebook, imports the tqdm underscore notebook function from the tqdm library, which is a tool for adding progress bars to loops in Python. This can be helpful for tracking the progress of time-consuming tasks and debugging code. The eighth line, percent matplotlib inline, is a magic command in Jupyter Notebooks that tells matplotlib to display its plots inline in the notebook. This makes it easy to explore data and visualize results within the context of a Jupyter Notebook. The last line, import cv2 as cv, imports the OpenCV library and assigns it the shorthand name, CV, for convenience. OpenCV is a library for computer vision tasks like image and video processing. It provides a range of functions for tasks like image filtering, feature detection, and object recognition. Overall, these libraries are essential tools for data analysis, visualization, and computer vision tasks in Python. Load data. This code sets up variables for the paths to the data files for a deep fake detection challenge. The first line of code creates a variable called data underscore folder and sets it to the path. Slash input slash deepfake detection challenge. This is the main folder where the data for the challenge is stored. The second line of code creates a variable called train underscore sample underscore folder and sets it to train underscore sample underscore videos. This folder contains a sample of the training data for the challenge, 
which is a set of videos that have been labeled as real or fake. The third line of code creates a variable called test underscore folder and sets it to test underscore videos. This folder contains a set of videos that will be used to test the accuracy of deep fake detection models. The next two lines of code use the OS module to count the number of files in each of these folders. The OS.lister function returns a list of all of the files in a directory, and the len function returns the number of items in that list. The fourth line of code uses fstrings, a feature introduced in Python 3.6, to print the number of samples in the training folder. The fstring starts with the letter f and includes curly braces that contain the variable or expression to be evaluated and displayed. The output of this line of code will be something like Train samples 100. The fifth line of code uses a similar F string to print the number of samples in the test folder. The output of this line of code will be something like test samples 50. Overall, this code is a simple way to check the number of data samples in the training and test folders for a deep fake detection challenge. It is a useful step in data exploration and understanding the scope of the challenge. We also added a face detection resource. This code defines variables that contain the paths to different folders within a dataset for a deep fake detection challenge. The first line creates a variable named data underscore folder and assigns it the string value slash input slash deep fake detection challenge. This variable points to the main folder where the data for the challenge is stored. The second line creates a variable named train underscore sample underscore folder and assigns it the string value train underscore sample underscore videos. This variable points to a folder within the data underscore folder. That contains a subset of the training videos. These videos have been labeled as either real or fake. The third line creates a variable named test underscore folder and assigns it the string value test underscore videos. This variable points to a folder within the data underscore folder that contains the test videos that will be used to evaluate the accuracy of deep fake detection models. The next two lines of code use the OS module to count the number of files in each of the folders. Specifically, the OS.lister function is used to return a list of all the files in the folder specified by the path, and the len function is used to count the number of files in the return list. The fourth line of code uses an f-string, a string formatting technique introduced in Python 3.6, to display the number of training samples. The f-string uses curly braces to insert the number of files returned by the os.lister function into the string. The os.path.join function is used to create a path to the train underscore sample underscore folder within the data underscore folder, directory. The fifth line of code uses a similar F string to display the number of test samples. It uses the same os.path.join function to create a path to the test underscore folder within the data underscore folder, directory. Overall, this code is a simple way to count the number of samples in the training and test folders of a deep fake detection dataset. It is a useful step in understanding the size and scope of the dataset and in preparing for further data analysis and modeling tasks. Check files type. Here we check the train data files extensions. Most of the files looks to have MP4 extension. Let's check if there is other extension as well. This code snippet reads a list of files located in a specific directory path data underscore folder and train underscore sample underscore folder subdirectory. It creates an empty list ext underscore dict to store unique file extensions present in the directory. The for loop iterates through each file in the directory and extracts the file extension by splitting the file name using the split method and taking the second part of the resulting list. If the file extension is not already in the ext underscore dict list, it gets appended to the list. Finally, the code prints the unique extensions found in the directory, using an f string to format the output as a string preceded by the word extensions. Overall, this code is useful for finding out what types of files exist in a directory by examining their extensions. Let's count how many files with each extensions there are. This code snippet is used to print out the count of files in a specific directory with a particular file extension. The loop iterates over each unique file extension present in the ext underscore dict list generated by the previous code snippet. For each file extension, the code uses a list comprehension to create a new list of file names in train underscore list that end with the extension file underscore ext. The ends with method checks whether the file extension of each file matches the current extension in the loop. The code then prints a string that shows the number of files with the current file extension. The f string uses curly braces to interpolate the variable file underscore ext and the length of the filtered list. The output is a string that shows the file extension and the count of files in the directory that have that extension. Overall, this code is useful for obtaining information about the files in a directory based on their extensions, providing a summary of the types of files present and their relative proportions. Let's repeat the same process for test videos folder. This code snippet is used to list the file extensions and the count of files with each extension in a specific directory. 
The first part of the code reads a list of files located in the test underscore folder directory within the data underscore folder path. It creates an empty list ext underscore dict to store unique file extensions present in the directory. The second part of the code iterates over each file in the test underscore list and extracts the file extension by splitting the file name using the split method and taking the second part of the resulting list. If the file extension is not already in the ext underscore dict list, it gets appended to the list. The third part of the code prints the unique extensions found in the test underscore list directory, using an f string to format the output as a string preceded by the word extensions. The fourth part of the code loops through each unique file extension present in the ext underscore dict list generated by the previous loop. For each file extension, the code uses a list comprehension to create a new list of file names in the train underscore list that end with the extension file underscore ext. The ends with method checks whether the file extension of each file matches the current extension in the loop. Finally, the code prints a string that shows the number of files with the current file extension in the train underscore list directory. The f string uses curly braces to interpolate the variable file underscore ext and the length of the filtered list. The output is a string that shows the file extension and the count of files in the train underscore list directory that have that extension. Overall, this code provides information about the file extensions and the count of files with each extension in both train underscore list and test underscore list directories, allowing for comparison between the two sets of files. Let's check the JSON file first. This code snippet searches for a file in the train underscore list that ends with the extension .json and assigns it to the variable json underscore file. The first part of the code uses a list comprehension to filter out all the file names in the train underscore list that do not end with the .json extension. It creates a new list that contains only file names that end with .json. The zero at the end of the list comprehension is used to extract the first file name that matches the condition. Since we are expecting only one file with the .json extension in the train underscore list directory, this operation ensures that json underscore file is a string containing the name of the json file. The second part of the code prints a string that shows the name of the json file that was found, using an f string to format the output. The curly braces are used to interpolate the variable json underscore file into the string preceded by the word json file. Overall, this code is useful for finding a specific file with a particular extension in a directory and storing the file name in a variable for later use. In this case, it is used to identify the JSON file among other files in the train underscore list directory. Apparently here is a metadata file. Let's explore this JSON file. This code snippet defines a function get underscore meta underscore from underscore JSON path that reads a JSON file located at a specific directory path and returns a pandas data frame object containing the data from the JSON file. The function takes one argument path, which is a string that specifies the subdirectory path where the JSON file is located. The JSON file name is specified by the JSON underscore file variable that was previously defined. The function first reads the JSON file into a data frame object DF using the read underscore JSON method from the pandas library. The os.path.join method is used to join the data underscore folder path, the path argument, and the JSON underscore file variable to obtain the full path to the JSON file. The df.t method is used to transpose the data frame object so that the rows become columns and vice versa. This is useful because the original JSON data is usually structured as a list of dictionaries, where each dictionary corresponds to a row of data. By transposing the data frame, we can make the dictionaries become the columns of the data frame. Finally, the function returns the data frame object df containing the JSON data. The last part of the code uses the get underscore meta underscore from underscore JSON function to read the JSON file located in the train underscore sample underscore folder subdirectory and assign the resulting data frame object to the variable meta underscore train underscore df. The head method is then used to print the first five rows of the meta underscore train underscore df data frame to verify that the data has been read correctly. Overall, this code is useful for reading structured data stored in JSON format into a pandas data frame object, which can then be used for data analysis and manipulation. Metadata exploration. Missing data. We start by checking for any missing values. This code defines a function missing underscore data, data, that takes a pandas data frame object data as input and returns a summary of the missing data in the data frame. The function first uses the isNull method to create a Boolean mask of the same shape as the data frame, with true values where the original data frame has missing values and false elsewhere. Then the sum method is used to sum up the number of true values, i.e., the number of missing values, along each column of the data frame. The resulting counts are stored in a new data frame called total. Next, the code computes the percentage of missing data in each column by dividing the number of missing values by the total number of values in the column and multiplying by 100. The resulting percentages are stored in a new data frame called percent. The concat method is used to concatenate the total and percent data frames along the axis equals 1, i.e., horizontally, into a new data frame called tt. This new data frame has two columns, total and percent, 
representing the total count and percentage of missing values for each column in the original data frame. The code then iterates over each column of the data data frame and extracts its data type using the type attribute. The data types are stored in a list called types. Finally, the TT data frame is augmented with a new column called types, which contains the data types of the columns in the original data frame. The function then transposes the resulting data frame TT using the transpose method and returns it. Overall, this code is useful for quickly identifying missing values in a pandas data frame, providing a summary of the number and percentage of missing values in each column of the data frame along with the data types of the columns. This code is calling the missing underscore data function and passing the meta underscore train underscore df data frame as an argument. The missing underscore data function takes a pandas data frame as input and returns a summary of the missing data in the data frame, including the number and percentage of missing values in each column, as well as the data types of the columns. By calling the missing underscore data function on the meta underscore train underscore df data frame, this code produces a summary of the missing data in the meta underscore train underscore df data frame. The output is a transposed data frame object that displays the number and percentage of missing values for each column in meta underscore train underscore df, along with the data types of the columns. Overall, this code is useful for identifying and understanding the extent of missing data in a pandas data frame, which is a crucial step in data cleaning and preparation. There are missing data 19.25% of the samples, or 77. We suspect that actually the real data has missing original, if we generalize from the data we glimpsed. Let's check this hypothesis. This code is calling the missing underscore data function on a subset of the meta underscore train underscore df data frame that meets a specific condition using the dot lock method to select rows based on the value of the label column. The condition meta underscore train underscore df dot label equals equals real selects only the rows in meta underscore train underscore df where the value of the label column is equal to the string real. The resulting data frame subset is then passed as an argument to the missing underscore data function, which returns a summary of the missing data in the subset. The output is a transposed data frame object that displays the number and percentage of missing values for each column in the subset, along with the data types of the columns. Overall, this code is useful for obtaining a summary of the missing data in a subset of a larger data frame that meets a specific condition, which can be useful for investigating the data quality and completeness for specific categories or groups. In this case, the code is useful for examining the missing data for the subset of meta underscore train underscore df corresponding to the real label. Unique values. Let's check into more details the unique values. This code defines a function unique underscore values data that takes a pandas data frame object data as input and returns a summary of the unique values in the data frame. The function first uses the count method to count the number of non-missing values for each column in the data frame. The resulting counts are stored in a new data frame called total. The data frame method is used to create a new data frame object called TT that has the same shape as total. The columns attribute is used to set the column names of TT to total. The code then iterates over each column of the data data frame and uses the unique method to count the number of unique values in the column. The resulting counts are stored in a list called uniques. Finally, the TT data frame is augmented with a new column called uniques, which contains the number of unique values for each column in the original data frame. The function then transposes the resulting data frame TT using the transpose method and returns it. Overall, this code is useful for quickly identifying the number of unique values in a pandas data frame, providing a summary of the number of unique values for each column in the data frame. This code is calling the unique underscore values function and passing the meta underscore train underscore df data frame as an argument. The unique underscore values function takes a pandas data frame as input and returns a summary of the unique values in the data frame including the total count of non-missing values and the number of unique values in each column. By calling the unique underscore values function on the meta underscore train underscore df data frame, this code produces a summary of the unique values in the meta underscore train underscore df data frame. The output is a transposed data frame object that displays the total count of non-missing values and the number of unique values for each column in meta underscore train underscore df. Overall, this code is useful for quickly identifying the number of unique values in each column of a pandas data frame which is a useful step in data exploration and understanding. Most frequent originals. Let's look now to the most frequent originals uniques in trained sample data. The given code defines a Python function named most underscore frequent underscore values. That takes a pandas data frame as input and computes the most frequently occurring values for each column in the data frame, along with some additional information. The function first calculates the total number of non-missing values in each column of the input data frame using the count method of pandas. It then creates a new data frame named tt using the total variable. The tt data frame contains a single column called total, which shows the number of non-missing values for each column of the input data frame. 
The function then iterates over each column of the input data frame using a for loop. For each column, it computes the most frequently occurring values using the value underscore counts method of pandas. It then appends the most frequent value and its frequency to two lists named items and vals, respectively. After computing the most frequent values and their frequency for each column, the function adds three new columns to the TT data frame. The first column is named most frequent item and contains the most frequent value for each column. The second column is named frequency and contains the frequency of the most frequent value for each column. The third column is named percent from total and contains the percentage of the total number of non-missing values that the most frequent value represents for each column. Finally, the function returns the transposed TT data frame, which has rows as columns and columns as rows. The resulting data frame shows the most frequent values, frequency, and percentage of the total for each column of the input data frame. The code most underscore frequent underscore values meta underscore train underscore df is calling the most underscore frequent underscore values function with an argument named meta underscore train underscore df. This suggests that meta underscore train underscore df is a pandas data frame and the function is being used to calculate the most frequent values and additional information for each column in this data frame. When the most underscore frequent underscore values function is called with meta underscore train underscore df as an argument, it computes the most frequently occurring values for each column in the data frame along with some additional information, as described in the previous answer. The function then returns a transposed data frame that shows the most frequent values, frequency, and percentage of the total for each column of the input data frame. So, by calling most underscore frequent underscore values, meta underscore train underscore df, the user is able to quickly and easily calculate the most frequent values and additional information for each column of the meta underscore train underscore df data frame which can be useful for exploring the data and identifying potential issues, such as missing or outlier values, that may need to be addressed before further analysis. We see that most frequent label is fake, 80.75%, momsgd.mp4 is the most frequent original, 6 samples. Let's do now some data distribution visualizations. The given code defines a Python function named plot underscore count. That takes four parameters, feature, title, df, and size. The purpose of the function is to plot the count of classes for a given feature in a pandas data frame, df, and display the number and percentage of each class in the plot. The function first creates a new figure using the subplots, method of matplotlib, and sets the figure size based on the size, parameter. It then calculates the total number of instances in the input data frame using the len function and assigns the result to the total variable. The function then creates a count plot using Seaborn's count plot function. The count plot shows the number of instances for each class of the specified feature in the input data frame. The classes are ordered based on their frequency using the value underscore counts method of pandas. The count plot is displayed with a title that includes the specified title parameter. The function then checks the size parameter to determine whether to rotate the x-axis labels and decrease their font size. For each bar in the count plot, the function adds a text label above the bar that shows the percentage of the total instances that the class represents. Finally, the function displays the count plot using matplotlibs, show function. Overall, the plot underscore count function is a useful tool for visualizing the distribution of a categorical feature in a pandas data frame and quickly identifying the most common classes and their relative frequencies. The code plot underscore count split split train meta underscore train underscore df is calling the plot underscore count function with three arguments. The first argument is a string split, which represents the name of a feature slash column in the meta underscore train underscore df data frame that contains information about whether a data point belongs to the training, validation, or testing set. The second argument is a string split, train, which is the title of the plot that will be generated by the function. The third argument is the meta underscore train underscore df data frame itself. By calling the plot underscore count function with these arguments, the code is generating a count plot of the split feature in the meta underscore train underscore df data frame. The count plot shows the number of instances for each class of the split feature, which in this case represents whether a data point belongs to the training set or not. The classes are ordered based on their frequency using the value underscore counts method of pandas. The title of the plot is set to split, train, which suggests that the plot is specifically showing the distribution of the training set among all the data points in the meta underscore train underscore df data frame. The function will display the count plot with the number and percentage of instances in each class, which can be useful for quickly assessing the balance of the training set relative to the other sets, such as the validation and testing sets. The code plot underscore count label label train meta underscore train underscore df is calling the plot underscore count function with three arguments. The first argument is a string label, 
which represents the name of a feature slash column in the meta underscore train underscore df data frame that contains the class labels of the data points. The second argument is a string labeled train, which is the title of the plot that will be generated by the function. The third argument is the meta underscore train underscore df data frame itself. By calling the plot underscore count function with these arguments, the code is generating a count plot of the label feature in the meta underscore train underscore df data frame. The count plot shows the number of instances for each class of the label feature, which represents the class labels of the data points. The classes are ordered based on their frequency using the value underscore counts method of pandas. The title of the plot is set to label train, which suggests that the plot is specifically showing the distribution of the class labels among all the data points in the training set of the meta underscore train underscore df data frame. The function will display the count plot with the number and percentage of instances in each class, which can be useful for quickly assessing the balance of the classes in the training set and identifying any potential issues, such as class imbalance or skewed distributions, that may need to be addressed before building a machine learning model. As we can see, the real are only 19.25% in trained sample videos, with the fake S accounting for 80.75% of the samples. Video Data Exploration Missing Video or Missing Metadata the given code performs some comparisons between the file names of videos in a folder and the file names stored in a metadata data frame named meta underscore train underscore df. The first line of the code creates a numpy array meta with the index of the meta underscore train underscore df data frame. The index contains the file names of videos which have been previously loaded in the data frame. The second line creates another numpy array storage by scanning a directory containing the video files. The list of files is filtered by selecting only those which end with the extension mp4. The third line prints the total number of files in the metadata and storage numpy arrays, which represents the total number of videos in the metadata and storage folders, respectively. The fourth line uses the numpy method, setdiff1d, to find the set difference between the meta and storage numpy arrays. It prints the number of files that are present in the metadata but not in the storage folder. These files may be missing or have been deleted from the storage folder. The fifth line uses the setdiff1d method again to find the set difference between the storage and meta numpy arrays. It prints the number of files that are present in the storage folder but not in the metadata. These files may be new or have been added to the storage folder. Overall, the code is useful for identifying any discrepancies or inconsistencies between the file names in the metadata and storage folders, which can help ensure that all necessary videos are available for analysis. Few fake videos. The given code is creating a list of three randomly selected video file names from a metadata data frame named meta underscore train underscore df that have been labeled as fake, i.e., the label column is equal to fake. The code first uses the lock method of pandas to select rows from the meta underscore train underscore df data frame where the label column is equal to fake. It then uses the sample method of pandas to randomly select three rows from the resulting data frame. The sample method returns a new data frame containing the selected rows. Finally, the index attribute of the resulting data frame is accessed to get the index labels of the selected rows, which are the video file names in this case. These index labels are converted to a list using the list function and assigned to the variable fake underscore train underscore sample underscore video. Therefore, the fake underscore train underscore sample underscore video list contains the file names of three randomly selected videos from the training set of the metadata data frame that have been labeled as fake. This list can be used to load and visualize the corresponding videos and evaluate the performance of a machine learning model trained on the training set. The given code defines a Python function named display underscore image underscore from underscore video that takes a video file path as an argument. The purpose of the function is to read and display the first frame of the video file as an image. The function first creates a new video capture object using OpenCV's CV video capture method, which takes the video file path as an argument. This object is used to read the frames of the video. The function then reads the first frame of the video file using the read method of the video capture object. The resulting image data is stored in a variable named frame. Next, the function creates a new matplotlib figure with a size of 10 by 10 using the figure method of matplotlib. It then adds a subplot to the figure using the add underscore subplot method and assigns it to the variable ax. The function then converts the color space of the image from BGR to RGB using the CVT color method of OpenCV. This is necessary because OpenCV reads images in BGR format by default, while matplotlib expects images in RGB format. Finally, the function displays the image using the inshow method of the ax subplot. The resulting image will be displayed with the RGB color space and can be used to visualize the content of the video file. Overall, the 
display underscore image underscore from underscore video. Function is a useful tool for quickly viewing the content of a video file without having to play the entire video. The given code is using a for loop to iterate over each video file name in a list called fake underscore train underscore sample underscore video. The purpose of the loop is to display the first frame of each selected video file as an image using the display underscore image underscore from underscore video function for each video file in the fake underscore train underscore sample underscore video list. The code first creates a file path by joining the data underscore folder variable train underscore sample underscore folder constant and the video file name using the os.path.join method. This creates a full path to the selected video file in the data directory. The display underscore image underscore from underscore video function is then called with this file path as an argument, which reads and displays the first frame of the video file as an image. Therefore, the overall purpose of the code is to display the first frame of each randomly selected fake video file in the training set of the metadata data frame, allowing the user to visually inspect the content of the videos and assess the quality of the data. Few real videos. The given code is creating a list of three randomly selected video file names from a metadata data frame, named meta underscore train underscore df, that have been labeled as real, i.e., the label column is equal to real. The code first uses the lock method of pandas to select rows from the meta underscore train underscore df data frame where the label column is equal to real. It then uses the sample method of pandas to randomly select three rows from the resulting data frame. The sample method returns a new data frame containing the selected rows. Finally, the index attribute of the resulting data frame is accessed to get the index labels of the selected rows, which are the video file names in this case. These index labels are converted to a list using the list function and assigned to the variable real underscore train underscore sample underscore video. Therefore, the real underscore train underscore sample underscore video list contains the file names of three randomly selected videos from the training set of the metadata data frame that have been labeled as real. This list can be used to load and visualize the corresponding videos and evaluate the performance of a machine learning model trained on the training set. The given code is using a for loop to iterate over each video file name in a list called real underscore train underscore sample underscore video. The purpose of the loop is to display the first frame of each selected video file as an image using the display underscore image underscore from underscore video function for each video file in the real underscore train underscore sample underscore video. List the code first creates a file path by joining the data underscore folder variable train underscore sample underscore folder constant and the video file name using the os.path.join method. This creates a full path to the selected video file in the data directory. The display underscore image underscore from underscore video function is then called with this file path as an argument, which reads and displays the first frame of the video file as an image. Therefore, the overall purpose of the code is to display the first frame of each randomly selected real video file in the training set of the metadata data frame, allowing the user to visually inspect the content of the videos and assess the quality of the data. Videos with same originals. The given code is using pandas to perform value counts on a specific column called original in the meta underscore train underscore df data frame. The code is returning the count of unique values in the original column which represents the name of the original video file from which the corresponding fake video was generated. The 0 to 5 at the end of the code is a slicing operation that limits the output to the top five most frequent values in the original column, sorted in descending order. Overall, the code is useful for quickly identifying the original videos that have been most frequently used to generate the fake videos in the training set of the metadata data frame. We pick one of the originals with largest number of samples. We also modify our visualization function to work with multiple images. The given code defines a Python function named display underscore image underscore from underscore video underscore list. That takes a list of video file paths as an argument. The purpose of the function is to read and display the first frame of each video file in the list as an image. The function first creates a new matplotlib figure and subplot with two rows and three columns using the subplots method of matplotlib. The figure size is set to 16 by 8. The function then iterates over each video file in the provided list. For each video file, it first creates a file path by joining the data underscore folder variable train underscore sample underscore folder constant and the video file name using the os.path.join method. This creates a full path to the video file in the data directory. The function then creates a new video capture object using OpenCV's CV video capture method, which takes the video file path as an argument. This object is used to read the frames of the video. The function then reads the first frame of the video file using the read method of the video capture object. 
The resulting image data is stored in a variable named frame. Next, the function converts the color space of the image from BGR to RGB using the CVT color method of OpenCV. This is necessary because OpenCV reads images in BGR format by default, while Matplotlib expects images in RGB format. Finally, the function displays the image using the imshow method of the corresponding subplot, sets the title of the subplot to the video file name, and turns on the axis for the subplot. Therefore, the overall purpose of the code is to display the first frame of each video file in a list of video file paths, allowing the user to quickly assess the content and quality of the videos. By default, the function will display images for the first six videos in the list, arranged in a 2 by 3 grid. The given code first creates a new list named same underscore original underscore fake underscore train underscore sample underscore video by using pandas to select rows from the meta underscore train underscore df data frame where the original column is equal to momsgd.mp4. In this case, the original column represents the name of the original video file from which the corresponding fake video was generated. The code then calls the display underscore image underscore from underscore video underscore list function passing the same underscore original underscore fake underscore train underscore sample underscore video list as an argument. The purpose of the function is to display the first frame of each video file in the list as an image. Therefore, the overall purpose of the code is to display the first frame of each fake video file in the training set of the metadata data frame that was generated from the original video file named momsgd.mp4. This can be useful for analyzing the quality and characteristics of the fake videos generated from a specific original video.